The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Thursday. It is February 20th. And um, this is another episode of CFRN Thursday, where I go over the CFRN trade setup in slow motion. Uh, again, my name is Bert. I'm with Daniels Trading. And um, for about an hour, we're going to hang out. And um, uh, the game plan really is to, number one, uh, before I present, I'm going to go over the two disclaimers that I have to uh, put in front of you and talk about. So we'll cover that, and then we'll go into the trade setup. Okay, this is the traditional slingshot setup that you'll see inside the training room every single morning. Uh, so we'll go over that. I'll break that down. Uh, you'll hear, you'll see the setup. You'll hear some of the buzzwords. You'll learn the methodology. Um, if you're brand spanking new, this is going to be your cheat sheet or syllabus you'll be able to lean on. Okay. In the morning, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, Michael is in there for two hours, um, and he's got an objective, which is to get his goal. All right, so that's his game plan. So my idea was to um, slow everything down and give you a breakdown of how the method works. So when you're in the training room during the one-week free trial, you're absorbing what's going on. So at the end of your trial, you, your eyes are wide open, your expectations are set, and you can figure out whether or not you want to push the PayPal button or not. Okay, that's that's what I'm doing. Um, so it's kind of an eyes wide open approach. Um, after I break down the trade setup, then what I'm going to do is go inside a live market, and uh, we'll find that same setup, and we'll show you how to put trades on. Okay. <clears throat> And we put the trades on here inside this DOM. If we get a bullish setup, we'll, you know, we'll do we'll left or right click in the green. If we get a bearish setup, we'll right or left click in the red side of the DOM. Okay. This tower here is where we do all our buying and selling. So what I'll do is I'll identify the setup. Uh, we'll go inside the the order entry platform here. We'll put the trade on. We'll set the stop. We'll trail the stop. And then I'll let you know exactly when to exit. Okay. And that's it. I'm, I'm going to do that in slow motion. So, again, you can absorb what's going on. All right. And that's the goal. Um, so, again, for the new guys that are brand new, this is going to be a great cheat sheet for you to lean on. If you are a CFRN member, this is a great time to ask questions. Um, you'll get uh, to see and hear the way I'm looking at things. Maybe uh, from my point of view, maybe breaking things down, explaining it differently might open your eyes a little bit, especially if you're brand new and already a member or you're sitting on the sidelines gaining confidence. Um, maybe there's a few things that I say um, that might get you to that comfort level. Okay, um, I'm going to make some observations throughout the presentation, some common traps that people fall into. Remember, I've been in the room from day one, right? So I really have seen where people struggle, okay? And I will hammer those away, all right, and tell you, you know, offer some solutions on how to handle it, all right? Uh, you know, I've been in there since day one, so and I'm in there every single day. I'm just kind of in the background letting Mike do his thing, okay? So I know the methodology. I can teach the methodology. And um, so eventually, if you decide to go down the CFRN path and you decide you're going to use the platform DT Pro, that's the platform I'm featuring this afternoon. Um, that is the platform I support, all right? So it's going to be... It's comforting to know it. At, in the end, if you have questions, you can raise your hand, call somebody. I'm going to be the guy that picks up. And the guy that's on the other end is going to know what you're talking about, how we can fix it, and um, help you out along the way. Okay. So you're making a commitment to CFRN. Uh, if you make a commitment to the, the platform, then I'll make the commitment to you. All right. And that's why I hang out here every Thursday for an hour, um, because I know 
you know, in the past, people were raising their hands and they were saying, slow down, slow down, slow down. And um, I decided, you know what, I'll take an hour, an hour out of the day on Thursday and see if I can um, get people uh, comfortable and confident and uh, ready to take it to the next level. So that is the scoop. All right. So with that being said, let's push forward and let me get through what I need to talk about, which are the disclaimers. Okay. Uh, let me get my marker out. You know, again, I've been around CFRN for almost 10 years. I've been in the business for almost 25 years. So, um, yeah, I really have seen the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to trading futures, okay? So for me to throw this disclaimer up and say, hey, take a look at it, um, doesn't make me feel good at all. So I, I, I do take a few minutes to talk about it because um, this label is basically catered for those guys that are brand spake and new to our space, okay? Because what this outlines outline is really is to say, look, I know you got a ton of emails and you got this marketing piece from this guy and this guru and this piece and and they're telling you how great it is and how easy it is and you can do this and you can do that and you can change your lifestyle and you get all crazy and you, you get fired up. But what happens is a lot of times they don't balance it with the risk side of it. And that's what I'm doing. And I know it's not a sexy way to start a webinar talk about the risks that are associated with it but again this is an eyes wide open approach and um, I wouldn't be doing that if I wasn't talking about the risks so we'll, we'll, we'll cover that first all right so um, again basically this says is look if you don't have a training trading plan if you don't have a stop loss if you're not looking over the markets if you're not engaged in your trading platform if you're not in tune with what's going on in the the, the world of news, um, you can lose everything and some in your trading account, period. Okay. Um, and like I said, over the years, I've seen it on occasion. If something silly comes out, market goes into a tailspin. And, you know, there's landmines everywhere. There's debits and stuff because... The market, you know, people just couldn't keep up with, with the, um, the pace of the market. Um, so that's one of the topics that this disclaimer covers. Okay, it's a scary thing, not a great way to start a webinar, but it is a reality. The positives. Okay, number one, we are. If you go down the CFRN path, we're going to have a trading plan, right? We're going to talk about that in a few minutes, right? So that's the trading plan, right? So that, that checks that box, correct? Um, every trade has an eight tick stop attached to it. No matter what market you're trading, um, it always has a stop loss. So it checks that box. We're going to be on a four tick range chart. So we're going to be looking at the market under a microscope. So you have to be engaged in the marketplace, all right? So that's going to check that box. Remember, I just talked about the DOM, that tower where we do our buying and selling. Okay. Well, you're going to have to be in, in practice or you need to be inside of a platform. You'll have to be engaged in your trading account. Okay. So you know, it checks that box too. All right. And, you know, with CFRN, one of the big things for them is they will not trade at or around news items. Okay, no one knows what the news is or what you know the results will be. So they like to eliminate that risk altogether. So that checks that box. So again, I kind of scared you up front to say, hey, look, man, this warning label here, that's a reality. And if you're not doing these five simple things, okay, this disclaimer can hit you right smack dab in your face. All right. Again, the positive spin on it is if you go down that path, CFRN is checking off all, all those boxes. Does it eliminate it altogether? No, it doesn't. Okay, you could be doing all the right things. 
You know, you can be in front of the screens, you can be engaged in the marketplace, you know what the news items are, you have the stop in, and then if some silly tweet news item comes out, there is a possibility that your stop gets hopped over, you have unlimited risk in the market, you have some exposure, uh, good or bad, all right? And so that is a risk, all right? And that, that needs to be highlighted and talked about, okay? The good thing is, again, you're going to be in front of a platform. And if all hell is breaking loose, okay, at least you'll be in the, in front of the dot. That's this tower here, okay? If all hell is breaking loose, you can hit this hot key here. It's called exit at market and cancel. <clears throat> That'll get you out of the market right away, okay? It'll cancel all stops in that market. So then you can hit the pause button and say, okay, what the heck just happened? Where am I at? I better call Bert to find out where I'm at in the market and make sure I'm flat. Okay. So, you know, at least you'll be engaged in what's going on. At least you can be able to take action if the worst case scenario happens. Okay. And that's what the risk disclaimer is. It's kind of telling you, okay, look, you can't eliminate it all together. But you can, you know, check a lot of those boxes off that, you know, to prevent that from happening. Okay. Okay. My experience with CFRN over the years is that um, the guys that are knocking on their door, they've been to this guy and this guy and that guy and this guy, and they haven't had success. So this disclaimer, they're really numb by it because they've lost enough money to call a timeout and say, you know what, maybe I need to go somewhere else and. and and stick my flag somewhere else, okay? And um, so this is basically catered to you guys in a brand new, okay? So um, in addition to that, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. That means what I'm talking about today might not be the case next week or down the road, okay? The good thing is, again, the positive spin on it is that we're going to go over this page here okay this is where i'm going to go over the rules right talk about the buzzwords this guy was printed back in 2012 all right so a big question i get all the time is has this thing been tweaked changed uh form fitted in any way no this guy's been around okay i'm going to go over the set same setup and here's something that was printed eight years ago okay so no, nothing's changed, okay? Um, can something change down the road? Of course, and we have to say, yes, it could. Um, as new things developed over the years, absolutely. The 137, the 164, all the other trades um, that have kind of evolved down the road, yeah, there's some new stuff that's happened. But this guy's been around since day one, and that's the one that Mike's doing it. He's trying to stay consistent in the room, so that's why we're going to go over it and talk about it, because this is what you're going to get exposed to. All right. Can you do those other things? Absolutely. Some people are comfortable with the other trade setups, but uh, we're just going to talk about the guy that's been around from day one because nothing's changed. Um, in addition, the funds that you're putting in into a trading account, whether it's with, with me or somebody else, make sure the funds are um, it's risk capital. Um, it's got to be funds that you can afford to lose and, and it doesn't change your lifestyle. You can still pay your bills. Okay. Nobody likes to lose. I don't like to lose. It's not a good feeling. But the bottom line is if that silly, crazy thing happens in the world and you lose everything in your trading account, you're not, you're not changing your lifestyle. Okay. And when you open up a trading account, whether it's with me or not, we're going to check. Okay. No, we're not going to dig into your financials, but we're going to ask the question, okay? And um, so that's part of our policies and procedures. In fact, that's everyone's, all right? So like I said, not a great way, not a fun way to really start a webinar, but I'm talking, this is a nice wide open approach. It starts with that, the risks. <clears throat> okay. Slide number two. Basically outlines, let me get this over here, 
my relationship with CF Ferenc because I'm in the room every single day. And sometimes you get some cross currents and, and there isn't and there can't be. So basically I'm burdened with Daniel's trading. Okay. I'm gonna go over the indicators um, inside my trading platform. I work for Daniel's trading. We support the DT Pro trading platform. Okay, this guy right here. Okay, that's the platform. Their indicator set is built inside our platform. Okay, so I represent Daniel's trading. So if you decide to take the trial, you can get a free week of the CFR indicators. You'll get access to the platform with real time data, order entry execution, real time PL, the whole nine yards. Okay, that's what we offer. If you have problems downloading the platform, downloading the indicators, any hand raises on the setups, uh, you will contact me directly. Okay, I can handle all that. In fact, um, we can even go as far as doing a one on one go to webinar, kind of a screen share, just you and I. So if you have any obstacles you're running into, we can knock those out together with a screen share. Okay. So usually that takes about 10 or 15 minutes, right? But uh, that's kind of, you know, that's my role in all this, okay? The other cast of characters are over here at CFRN. You got Mike, he's the moderator in the room, okay? So for two hours every day, he's the guy in the room um, explaining the setups, putting the trades on, taking them off, and answering questions. You have Valerie, piece of support. She's in the background too. She's answering emails, texts, I mean, the questions that pop up in the question box, okay? And then there's Dwayne. Uh, Dwayne, in the afternoon, is the radio guy. In the morning, he and at night, he's doing the Logic 247 and the Concierge Trade Alerts, okay? He's the guy behind um, that product, okay? So we all have our different roles. The bottom line is, is that CFRN, they don't work for Daniel's Trading, and BERT doesn't work for CFRN. There's a brick wall in between us, okay? There has to be from a compliance standpoint. Um, so basically, what this disclaimer says is, look, they're, um, they're a third party, okay? It's their tools, their trading tools, it's their indicator set. They're the educator, so we have a third party relationship. Okay, if you decide to take the CFRN, if you decide to go down that path, okay, you're going to pay them directly. It doesn't go to me, then to them. That's your business. That's between you and them directly. Anything on their site, their videos, their webinars, their Thursday night workshops, um, the weekly trading zones that you get Sunday and Monday morning. You're not getting in that stuff. You go to them. Okay. Uh, when it comes to platform indicators, if you're trying to get DT Pro going, you're going to hit me. Okay. Again, like I said earlier, the good thing is, or the cool thing is, you got a phone number. Okay. I'm the guy that'll pick up the on, on the other end of the line. Okay. So if you have problems, it's nice to know that someone, um, a live body is going to pick up and they're going to know what the heck you're talking about. Okay. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, and down the road, if you decide, hey, I'm going to use the DT Pro platform and use the CFRN indicators, then I handle the execution and brokerage part of it too. Okay, so opening up in an account and going through the account paperwork process, that's my role too. Okay, so we we're all have kind of our different little hats on. The idea is we're on all, we're not all commingled. There is that brick wall in between, and there has to be. Okay, so that's it. Um, a few minutes left with this. Uh, I ran into Dwayne probably 10, maybe 12 years ago, okay, when it was just radio. So back then, we I don't know how we met, but we got together and he said, hey, why don't you come on the radio? I have this radio program. We're talking markets. So we were, you know, talking about markets and offering opinions and they said you can answer questions because we got guys that are are new to futures and they always have questions to ask and they want someone um, that's honest and you know 
answer correctly and you know not give him any bs um so that went on for a while and then all of a sudden you know what i noticed in the background was you know Dwayne was getting these requests hey show us how show us how show us how show us how to do this together with you know he got together with michael and they're both trade station developers our platform again is dt pro reads easy language and they were able to cold code the indicator set right inside the platform so kind of happened kind of it was kind of perfect timing okay so um and you know since then we just kind of just kept the relationship together so um that's kind of the scoop behind the whole thing okay so that said let me um let me shut down the live okay let me close that let me pull this up because this is where i'm going to go with the trade setup okay so um a few things before i get rolling here uh this is live so my phone might start buzzing if it does i'm going to put you on hold hit the mute button and then go from there okay so i just want to prepare you in advance okay um so yeah let's start with this this cheat sheet here like i said if you're brand new this is this is something you're going to lean on going forward okay so the first order of business is the time frame which is the four tick range chart all right so you might have dt pro up and you're probably wondering how the heck i get there maybe you're already there but the idea is hey i'm brand new where do i go from here my gut feeling is you're you're on a time-based chart so you might be on an hourly if you're following logic you're on a 30-minute chart uh you might be on a five minute chart okay the bottom line is you're probably on a time-based chart what you want to do is get on the four tick range chart okay so this little you know the way there drop down box here next to the time frame little arrow left click go down to custom and select range bar okay make that one look like a four Okay, hit OK. You're staring at the SP e Mini on a four tick range right now. Okay, the first trap that people tend to fall into is they hit the drop down box, they go down to custom, but they go to tick bar because a lot of times um, ticks, whether they're winning or losing with CFRN. It usually ticks is kind of the common denominator. So people kind of gravitate toward this line item here. They make that two look like a four, and that's that same chart, but on a four tick chart. If you're staring at this, it's just wrong, okay? You know, you fell into the first sand trap, so go to that range bar. And the tip really is sky here. It's in parentheses R, okay? That's when you know you're, you're, you're on the right time frame. Okay, um, the benefit of the four tick range chart. Here's what you're gonna list, here's what you're gonna hear inside the training room. See, the height of each candle, no matter how tall or short it looks like, um, it's always four ticks in height, okay? So what you're gonna hear in the training room is when all the rules apply, Okay, and we're gonna we're going over the rules now. Okay, so when all these rules are in play, okay, all of a sudden you might hear Michael start calling out the highs and the low of then the current bar. Okay. Okay, when he's doing that, what he's doing is he's preparing himself or he's preparing to place an order. Okay, he's doing it in advance. Okay, so what he's doing is if the current market price is right around here, 33.66, and he potentially gets a buy signal, and he's placing an order above. He's right clicking in the green and he's trying, he's placing an order to buy it on a stop. Okay. If he gets a sell, okay, a sell signal, and we're trading here around 33.66, 
And what he's doing is, is he's right clicking in the red, placing a self stop. Okay. He can be, be proactive in placing the order because he knows the height of each candle. The height of each candle is going to be four ticks in height. So if the market blasts off, okay, he's got an order in to enter the market on a buy stop. Or if the market breaks down, okay, he's got an order in to take advantage if the market heads down. Okay, he's buying it and selling it on stops. Okay, that's what he's doing. You will hear that. Okay, so when he starts calling out the highs and the lows, okay, just remember what I just said. That's that thing Bert talked about in the beginning of the webinar. And you should be preparing yourself. Okay, he's getting ready to place an order, or he already has. Okay, because there'll be come a, there'll come a time where the market will do one of these. And you're going to like, dude, you did not get into that trade, okay? Because I remember seeing, I see that all the time. And the way he's taking advantage of it is he's buying it on a stop or he's selling it on a stop. And that's how he's doing it, okay? So trust me when I say that's going to pop up, okay? And you'll say, well, I'm pre 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 preparing me for that. So that's how he's doing it, all right? So... The four tick range chart is the chart we want to be on. Okay. Let me move this over here. All right. Next order of business is the top portion of the chart. We're going to talk price action here. All right. So that's going to lead us into steps number one and two. All right. So some buzzwords here the red and blue line is referred to as the MA1, okay? The green line is referred to as BBC. That is short for bullish and bearish cross, okay? Together, okay, the MA1 with the green line or the BBC, that makes up step number one, okay, which is this. If the MA1 is red and crossing the BBC, it's a bearish cross. If the MA1 is blue and crossing the BBC, that's a bullish cross. So the one that's highlighted here is a bearish cross, and that's because the MA1 is red. Okay. So that's giving you an indication. That's the first step that kind of lights the match. It puts everything in motion. Okay. Once you get the cross, in this example, it's a bearish cross. We're looking for shorting opportunities at this point, okay? Now note, I didn't say go short, go long, go short. I said we're looking for shorting opportunities at this point because the MA1 is red, we're crossing the BBC, we have that bearish cross. Because the next step, step number two, after the cross, okay, this kind of leads us into step number two. The normal thing for the market to do is gravitate toward that BBC, as we see here. This is what we're looking for, the market to challenge that green line. Not only are we looking for it to challenge it, we're looking for it to touch it, but then close in the direction of the trend. Okay, we're looking for a red candle, which is highlighted by that arrow. Okay, so we're looking for the market after the cross to pull back to the BBC, okay, which is that green line, and then a close in the direction of the trend. Okay, that's step number two. All right, a few things. Number one, sometimes the market has so much momentum, bearish or bullish momentum, it will not get to the green line. Okay, so what you're going to learn this afternoon is this. After you get the cross, whether it's a bullish or bearish cross, you're going to activate the trend line on your on your platform because we never know if the market is going to do the normal thing. We don't know if it's going to get to the green line. So what you have to do is you have to get in the habit of drawing trend lines. Okay, here's a good example of it. Here's a market that's gravitating toward the BBC and then fails. And guess what? The market heads down. Okay. If that happens, okay, 
there's action to take. That's why we get in the habit of drawing trend lines because we never know if this if if that's going to happen. Okay, here's another example of it here. Okay, it doesn't quite get there, and then we get a reaction. All right, so you have to get in in the habit of drawing trend lines. You're going to see it in the room in the morning. Mike's drawing them all day long, all morning long. So if he's doing it, you should be doing it. If I'm telling you you should be doing it, you should definitely be doing it. Okay. All right. So hold on. Here's my first call. One second. Okay, I'm back. All right, I was just placing an order. Okay, so the idea is we need to get in the habit of drawing trend lines because if, if the market has so much bullish or bearish momentum, we have to be in a position to take action, all right? You're gonna see it in the training room, so that's, that's a good habit to get into, okay? I'll show you how to do it in a few minutes, okay? All right, so we're on step number two, which is the market's gravitating toward that green line and we get the down close, okay? Now our eyes are going to gravitate toward the oscillator portion of the of the chart. Okay, this is referred to as a slingshot, and the trade exists down below. It exists down in the slingshot. I'm going to I'm going to show you why. Okay, but before we get into it, you need to know some of the buzzwords down there. So this red and blue line is referred to as the cycle. Okay. This green line, really, there's nothing fancy about it. It's called green line, okay? But here's the scoop. This is how this works, okay? What the cycle is telling you, okay, is this. It's red. We associate red with selling. If we associate with a blue line, we, we look at that as buying momentum, okay? Bullish momentum. When everything is the same color, Okay, we have a bearish cross, a red line. We have a red candle at the BBC. Together with a red cycle, everything is the same color. That's good for the home team. That's what we're looking for ideally, okay? So when everything's the same color, that stacks all the probabilities in your corner. There's no more filtering or thinking. It's just a reaction into the DOM and pushing a button to get into the market. Okay, but the deal is here. What this is saying is the momentum is bearish. And not only that, look at the slope of it. It's down at a 45 degree angle. So it's saying, look, you have the wind to your back. Right. So the momentum is bearish. Okay. In the NASDAQ on a four tick range chart. Okay. So that's good. If, if we just got a bearish cross and we just rejected the BBC. Okay. That's good. Now, what, what does this green line have to do with anything? Okay, the green line pulling away together with this price action here is suggesting this. It's saying, look, this might be an air pocket, a little pop up in this ongoing downtrend because the momentum is bearish, right? That's what this green line is telling us. Together, with the price action here, okay? This pull away, okay? This space that's highlighted here, okay, with this arrow, that is the divergence or the separation 
that Michael is talking about in the train wheel. This is what you're looking for, that separation, okay? Because in the end, here's what you expect to happen. You expect this green line to pull away like a slingshot, okay? That's why it was labeled the slingshot. Green line is pulling away from the cycle. And when it's released, what happens is the green line will pull away and then get back into the cycle, just like you see here. And what price should do is then make a new pivot low, okay? It's at this point where that green line is getting into the cycle is where you take profit. That's where you close out the trade. Why? Because then what we expect to happen is this. Let me clean up the board here. We expect the green line to pull away, get into the cycle, pull away, get into the cycle, pull away, get into the cycle until guess what? The momentum has turned bullish. So now we have a blue cycle. So now you want the green line pulling away from the cycle underneath, okay, like we see here, all right? So what you end up doing, okay, selling this top, selling this top, buying this dip, buying this dip, closing the trade out here, closing the trade out here, okay, closing out the trade when the green line gets into the cycle every time. That's why the trade exists down in the slingshot, okay? This is kind of giving you the direction Okay, down or up. The green line together with the price action here is giving you those, those little extra variables to say, hey, that might be just these pullbacks in the ongoing trend that it's in. Okay, so that's why that trade exists down below. Okay, because that's we expect that green line to constantly be pulling away, pulling out, going back in, pulling out, going back in. Okay. So that's it. So in the end, basically, if this is day one for you, you're not learning to pick the top and you're not learning to pick the bottom. Okay. You're not learning to trade it from point A to point C. Okay. You're learning to take a piece out of the middle with your, with the wind to your back. Right. And along the way, you're going to trail the stop. Trail the stop, trail the stop, trail the stop until when? That green line gets into the cycle and then you close out the trade. That's the game plan. You're on a four tick range chart. Okay, so you're looking at the market under a microscope. You have to be in front of the screens, okay, because it's rules based. All right, you're going to be using aggressive risk management. I'm going to show you that in a minute. The Every trade has an eight tick stop attached to it. So that means, if again, if this is your first day in class, if you're trading the golden crude and you're dead wrong, your risk is, risk is 80 bucks a contract. If you're trading the S&P or S&P mini or the soybeans, that's closer to 100 bucks if you're dead wrong. If you're trading the euro or the YM, that's the mini Dow, it's closer to $40. Okay, so that's what you're signing up for. Be in front of the screens, trading, um, aggressive risk management that might that might mean a lot of trades um, that might be being in and out of the market a lot of times a lot of break evens might be minus eights you know some pluses in there so the bottom line is you're going to be active all right so the question is is that is that what you want to do uh, you're not holding trades overnight okay uh, you're in and out uh, you'll hear Michael in the training room talk about getting the risk off the table. That's the goal. Get the stop to your end to your break even. Okay. So you'll hear that language a lot. Okay. In the end. Okay. None of this takes place unless the market is doing what? Trending. If we get a bearish setup, we better be making lower lows. If we get a bullish setup, better be making higher highs and i know it's an easy thing to say the market should be doing that and trending but that's one of the biggest traps or problems that people i have a problem with they get caught in a sideways market and they don't even know it so i'm going to show you some tricks on how to how to avoid that and when in doubt if you're not sure 
don't push anybody's period okay i use the term it has to be easy and obvious okay michael will refer to that in the meeting in the morning sometimes if it doesn't check all the boxes then don't push any buttons okay um there's a few uh curveballs with the rules and stuff like that i'm gonna go over um but that is that's it that's the trade set up in a nutshell okay we're taking little pieces out of the market okay and we're going we're going with the momentum whether it's bullish or bearish okay and we're always using stop losses all right let's do this let's get locked and loaded here like that all right so i'm on a single thread so when you go in the training room, you're going to see Michael's charts. There's going to be like four lined up side by side by side. I'm on one, one thread. What does that mean? I'm just going to click through the different markets, and knock them out one at a time. Okay. So let's start with, I just clicked on the crude, and you should be on the April contract. Okay. GCL J20. Okay. Notice we're on a four tick range chart staring at the crude oil okay by the way if you have questions throw them in the, the question box okay um i'm happy to answer them okay all right so the first question that we always ask ourselves and that should be the number one thing on, on the top of a piece of paper or your rules okay should be are we trending okay are we trending are we making higher highs and lower lows and when i look at crude Okay, I see a double bottom here and I see us um, challenging that old low. So right now, unless we make a higher high or lower low, uh, we're taking no action in the crude oil, okay? Here's something that you need to get in the habit of doing. This red magnifying glass is your best friend, okay? What this allows you to do is zoom out. So you can see what's going on over here, over here, okay? You will not know if a market's trending unless you can't see what's going on over here. Notice when I zoom out, all the support that's been in the crude oil down at this level, okay? We are trading sideways, okay? Look at that. So when I say people fall into the trap, they get into this, you don't know it, okay? It's not your fault. What ends up happening, and this is not a knock on Michael, but what happens is you're seeing Michael's charts, right? They're blown up real big like this, okay? You're like, hey, there's that bearish cross, right? The MA1 is red and crossing the BBC, cool. I got step number one, okay? And what happens is you might execute a trade based on what you're seeing here, all right? And what you don't notice when you hit the zoom out button three or four times is that we're trading sideways. So then you get caught in this chop and then you start breaking even or going minus eight, stopped out, break even, stopped out, break even. And maybe you get lucky and you get the stop to break even or you make a few ticks, all right? But the bottom line is you get caught in this sideways chop and you don't even know it. Okay, so you have to hit the zoom out button, all right, or you'll get chopped up, period, okay? I've seen too many charts, uh, people sharing their charts and going, hey, is this a valid setup? And all I did was hit the zoom out button a few times and say, no, okay? You're, it was sideways. So for the moment, okay, crude is sideways and we're not gonna touch it, even though we have step number one, which is that bearish cross. Okay. If you're not sure if we're trending, a good a good thing to use to lean on is dynamic support and resistance. That's what these red and green dots are. If they're side by side like this, okay, that's a good in indication that we're in sideways chop. This isn't a very good example of the support and resistance dots, but you can see they're next to each other. All right. And and the fact that we're just we've been down here almost a handful of times. No, we don't want any part of that. OK, so the crude oil, 
standing at parade rest. Okay. When I say single thread, all I have to do is click on the gold now, my chart, my DOM changes. Okay. So are we trending? Notice I zoom out. Okay. A few things that pop up. Number one here. This high, this high with dynamic resistance printing. Okay. Okay. That says we were in a little bit of chop here. And then finally we broke dynamic resistance. Okay. So this is telling me consolidation, then we're starting that possible trend up. So the gold is trending. Okay. So if we do get a pullback, there might be an opportunity to get long the gold. Okay. If I zoom out, you're going to say, hey, wait a minute, what about this resistance here? Yeah, that's something we're going to have to deal with. But for the moment, okay, we have, we do have some higher highs here. Uh, again, side by side, that means sideways action, okay, until what? We break support, okay, until we break support. So here we broke resistance and we're staying above it. So if we get a pullback, let's let's look at maybe trying to take advantage of the gold market. Okay. So that's on our radar screen. We're just waiting. Okay. Indices. Zoom out, zoom out. Notice I do that, and there's an air pocket here, right? See this? There's nothing over here. But that tells me we're trending. All right. So this action here, notice how we broke dynamic resistance and we cleared that obstacle. This pullback here, okay, I would have been interested in getting long, okay? So let's cut that up, okay? Remember when I said, the first thing I said is as soon as one, another habit we need to get into is drawing trend lines, okay? Here's the bullish cross, right? That's step number one. The normal thing for the market to do is pull back to the BBC. That's step number two. Activate the trend line and start drawing. Okay. It takes two candles to connect the dots. Okay, hold on. It takes two candles to connect the dots. Okay. Here's what we have here. Do they have to be the same color? No. I get that question a lot, but they don't. I look for two red candles or two green candles because that tells me we're trying to flag or gravitate toward that green line. Okay. So we get one here. Okay. So the next thing is we look for the market to touch the BBC and the close in the direction of the trend. We get that here. Okay. Our eyes gravitate toward the oscillator portion of the chart and we're staring at this. All right, so time out. I said earlier, we want everything to be the same color. That's when we get excited about the trade, okay? Let's that, that's put all the probability in our corner. This one's red. All right, so the first thing that pops should pop up to you is that's gonna water down the probabilities, okay? That's number one. That's, that's the first, first thing that should register. Number two, if it is a different color, this trend line is required. Not only is it required, you need a close above that trend line before you decide you're gonna take action, okay? So there's two reasons why we draw trend lines now. One, we don't know if it'll get to the BBC. And two, if the cycle, that buzzword in the slingshot turns color, this is required and a close above it is also, also part of the equation, okay? So that's why you have to get in the habit of as soon as you get the cross, there's a bullish cross, activate your trend line, okay? Because in real time, it might be blue, 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 and then all of a sudden the sucker turns red, okay? Then you're trying to fumble around and trying to draw a trend line and it's, it's goofy, okay? Draw it ahead of time, so if it does turn color on you, and we get that close, okay, your next step is boom, inside the DOM taking action, okay? You need, develop, need to develop that kind of program. 
okay? Step, one step at a time. Okay. So that's the little curveball I was talking about, okay? And then there's a third curveball that I won't go into for the moment because I'll, I'll give you something hopefully in real time. All right, so back to the current action. Okay, so for now, are we trending? We were over here, notice the air pocket. Right now, we have a double top. So no, we're not buying anything until we go over this high, or it just might be a situation where we fall apart and look at possible sells. Okay, so we're trading sideways here. So let's put that on, on guard here. All right, let's go to our currencies. All right, so right now, Euro. Are we trending? If we break dynamic support, then yes, I would get excited about that. After the fact, here is the bearish cross. What do we do next? Activate the trend line. We start drawing. Because we don't know if it'll get to the BBC. Correct? We get to the BBC. And we also get the down close. Do we have a red cycle? Yes. Do we have slope? Yes, so the wind is at our back, right? And do we have that separation? Absolutely, so we have that divergence. This here right, checks all the boxes for potential for a, a short trade, okay? We would get short, okay? So what we would end up doing is going inside the DOM and left clicking, okay? And in this point of time, all right. And then along the way, if the market goes plus four ticks in our favor or one candle length, we move our stop to break even our entry. If it closes on the other side of the MA1, we also do the same, move the stop to our entry. What we anticipate is this green line to ultimately get down into the cycle and the market makes a new pivot low. Sometimes it doesn't like it does here, it does go lower, but then ultimately it goes back up, okay? That's why we trail the stop, okay? You'll hear Michael get the risk off, the, get the risk off, get the risk off. That's what he's talking about, and okay? that's that aggressive risk management, okay? And I said earlier, okay, right here, we had dynamic supports printing, right? Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, and look at dynamic support, resistance, dynamic support. In real time, facing this, no, I wouldn't have touched it. Was there an opportunity here? Yes, probably a few ticks, maybe break even. Uh, but what I would do is wait for now this area to be broken, okay, before we entertain going short the euro. Okay, it's close. I like this. Okay. But we need to make it, it needs to make a new low. Okay. So we'll get back to that. British pound. Sideways. We need to get over this high. Okay. Before we get excited about it. Okay. So a little bit of sideways action in the pound. Notice how we got it back and forth here. This was Frank. Okay, what's interesting here is that we have a lot of sideways action, but we are potentially breaking this dynamic support dot. Okay, if we start hanging out around here, we might be able to get short this was Frank. So we'll put that on our radar. The Australian dollar, zoom out. Okay, we are making lower lows, right? Is there any support over here? No. Okay, so hold on. Bearish cross. Step number one. Step two, activate the trend line. Draw. Is this a touch? 
No, it's not. Okay. Trying to get to the BBC right now. Okay. The trend line starts here. Now it's here. Okay. If we touch the green line with the BBC and we get a red candle, there is a shorting opportunity in the Australian dollar. The cycle is red. Okay. And we have some separation. Okay. There's one warning flag here. Okay. And Michael hit this. We'll highlight this in the room. It's good that it's red, right? We like that. It's good it has some slope to it, okay? But if the cycle starts flattening out here at the midpoint, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna keep our fingers off the button, okay? We're gonna eliminate that. So that's a disqualifier, okay? If the cycle gets flat on us at the midpoint here or anywhere close, okay, we're gonna stay off from pushing any buttons, okay? But a lot of stuff is here. Okay, we have one. Step two is trying to come into play. We already have step three. We already identified whether we're trending or not. We did that by zooming out. And look, we have nothing over here. Okay, there's a lot of airspace, right? But you might say, hey, there's dynamic support. There is. But we did make a lower low. Okay. So this would be an area where, you know, we would shoot for it. That might be a target. I don't know. Maybe we break it out. We don't know. All right. So the Aussie has a potential setup. All right. So I'm going to take it a step further here. So I'm going to blow this up. And I'm going to pretend I'm Michael. You're in the training room. Okay. And this is a way I can get our feet wet with what Michael's trying to do in the room. Okay. So I remember said it, I said earlier, he, he's proactive. He can do that because he knows the height of each candle, four ticks in height. So here's what he's doing. We'll start calling out the highs and the lows of then the current candle. So if the high is 66.23, okay, if you subtract four from that, one, two, three, four, okay, the low has to be 19, okay? If the low is 19, you're going to want to place a sell stop in this example at 66.18. That's a way he can be proactive, okay? Because if this is a touch and a down close, okay, if this prints a fifth tick, okay, we know the height of each tick, his candle is four ticks a night. We get the fifth print, okay? This will produce a red candle, and then it, it, it's a sell, okay? So here's the, here's the simple way to figure this out. And by the way, if this is day one, this is way over your head, all right? Okay, there's two ways you can do this. You can do what Michael's doing, okay? Place and sell stops and buy stops, or just keep it simple. If you see a red candle, just go inside the red and left click okay and doing so i'm placing a limit okay so the idea is this in the end if you're wondering what number do i push what is the deal add or subtract five that's your magic number so if the high is 23 subtract five that's the number you right click on period add or subtract five all right so that's, that's the magic equation. Okay, if you're not sure, add or subtract five. All right. I'm gonna cancel that. Let's see if anything else is moving here. All right, so hold on, one sec. I'm just gonna call. Let me call back one second.
All right, sorry about that, but here we go. Back to what we were talking about. So as we said earlier in the S&P, we had a double top here, and we had to wait for it to make a new high before we can get excited about getting long, okay? So we did make a higher high, and not only that, we broke some dynamic resistance here, right? Um, so that was good, all right? Here's what we're looking at now, okay? We get another pullback to BBC, which is that green line, okay? And there's our trend line. So not only do we get a close, but we also get a close above the trend line here. Here's the other thing I want you to be wary of, okay? At this point, we know this is trouble, right? But now, guess what's happening? The cycle is not only red, which waters down the probability, it's starting to curl over at a 45 degree angle, okay? That is a disqualifier, okay? You do not want to be in long in that environment if you're staring at this, okay? It might go up, okay? It might do that. But what what normally happens is the market will do this and then go down. It might be doing a cycle reset. You'll hear that word in the room, okay? So when you see this, okay, red, trend line required, close of trend above the trend line is also required, okay? But if it starts sloping against you at a 45 degree angle, don't push any buttons, okay? This market is trending. We did pull back, okay? But this cycle is screwing up the whole trade, all right? So don't do anything, all right? So I wanted to point that out because that's another trap that people fall into. And ironically, it was happening when my phone was ringing. So um, I, I wanted to bring that to your attention, okay? So the big traps, sideways markets. The other big trap is, Hey, the cycle's a different color and turning against us. That's no good. All right. All right. Let's uh, let's go look at that Aussie again. All right. So it's trying to, and this is common, you know, around almost two o'clock in the afternoon. The currencies get kind of dead, so it's trying. Um, there's a bullish cross in the Canadian. Pull back to the BBC with the up close. It's just lacking any nice. divergence. That green line should be underneath it. So nothing's going on there. The Mexican peso, okay, you notice there's no room over here. So this one's an easy to point to recognize um, or trending, okay? Again, here's a good example of what I just went over. We're drawing the trend line because that's what we were trained to do. Here's that close, okay, and look at the shape of the cycle. Not only is it blue, a different color, but it's pitched up at a 45 degree angle. The result is what we're seeing. This is the common result that actually should do this. So when that ends up happening, if you get stopped out or you get a lot of break-evens, and on occasion you get lucky, and actually it goes down, and you're like, yeah. You know, Bert said not to take it. I did. I made money. And uh, forget him. But you go back to the well one more time, and then you start getting stopped out again. It's a, it's a trap that people fall into. Just takes that one, kind of puts you in the green. You're like, all right, I got this. And then you, you kind of get blinded by this whole concept here. All right? Unfortunately, you have to stub your toe. All right, pull the car over and, and figure out what's going on. And you're like, ah, that's what Bert did say. He said if it was going against me, it's not a good idea. So unfortunately, you got to lose a little bit of dough to realize I got to stop doing that. All right, let's go back to crude. Maybe that's moving. Again, perfect reason why we did not take the trade. Okay. Here's again, here's the example of the flat cycle. Okay. So we did make a lower low, and I could understand where people might get excited about that. Okay, so fine. Let's get excited about it. We made a lower low, and we draw a trend line. I'm staring at crude in April. Okay. And right here, it's basically our first close, right? And this turns color on us midstream, and now you're kind of trapped. You're like, uh-oh. Okay. Again, we have the separation. But you notice how the cycle is flat. 
okay? And notice how the market's back and forth, okay? Very common, okay? So what ends up happening is you hit the break. A lot of times you get either stopped out, it's another break even, okay? So again, slope at our back is good for the home team, okay? And that's sloping up, okay? We can expect this, okay? That's what we want to see. Flat, no good. Different color, no good, okay? Hopefully we can find something for changes here. One sec. Again, I hate to labor over this, but again, this is going to hit you in the face over and over again. There's the up close. There's the trend line. Okay. There's the close. But again, Different color at a 45 degree angle. Look at the action. Sideways now to lower. Okay, it becomes a problem. So, not surprising. And ironically, it was right where dynamic resistance where we kind of are falling into a problem here. Okay, this was okay because we were trading north of dynamic resistance. But, okay, this is not surprising. Right. So again, the idea is stay away from this mess. Wrong color, slipping against you. Not good. All right. Let's see if we can get on the get on the back of something here. It's about a natural gas. We know that natural gas is moving. All right. Man, this market that's trending. Lower lows. Okay. So maybe if natural gas pops up, we can do something there. So we'll go back to that. All right. S&P is breaking down a little bit, right? Notice the momentum is red and it's got a nice slope. See the reaction. See the color here of the cycle? Nice slope to it. Notice the reaction, okay? Yeah. So that should get your attention, okay? It doesn't get talked about a lot in the room, okay? But when it gets, when it does that, you should get excited, okay? Especially if it's in the direction. All right, so this thing kicks back here. Let's see if we can't uh, get our hands dirty a little bit, okay? So we got a nice red cycle here. We got a bearish cross. We did break dynamic support, right? Activate your trend line and get ready to draw. I'm going to wait for two yeah. green candles before I connect the dots, okay? While that's happening, okay, so in the end, I'll end up clicking in the red here to get short, okay? But notice when I, in the DOM here, this is the tower. Notice when I left click on this Tinker Toy Triangle, the bottom of the DOM opens up here. This is where we put our stop losses. We have buy stop and sell stop checked off, okay? If you right click over it, factor in ticks, right click over it, factor in ticks, and put the number eight in there, what that'll do is that will put a stop loss in behind your entry, eight ticks away, okay? So you don't have to do any additional clicking. As soon as you get in, watch. Not only does it sell it, at the last price, but it also put the stop in right away. Okay, so let's see if we get the kickback here. If we get a, a kickback to the green line of the BBC, this cycle, or not the cycle, the green line should get on the other side of the cycle here and create some of that divergence we're looking for. Okay, positive to this, we broke dynamic support. So we're just waiting. So be patient. We're waiting for step number two. Okay. We're waiting for the 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 market to get back to the green line. We have our trend line activated. We're waiting for it so we can start drawing the trend lines. Okay. 
Hi, there's the first one. Give us another one. Remember, the height of each candle is going to be four ticks in height. Okay, that doesn't change. All right, there's our trend line. Okay, now here's the Michael Proactive deal. Okay, the highest 68.75, low should be 75 and a half. Okay. The high is 69. The low should be 68. We should be selling 67.75s. Okay. That would be a close below the trend line. Okay. Do we have the divergence? Yes. All right. The high. So let's cancel this. If the high is 69 and a quarter. The low should be 68 and a quarter, five ticks, 68 even. Okay, made a new high. All right, so all we need is a down close. 70, 69, 68, 75. That's your order. That's a proactive order. Okay, what I did is I took five, subtracted five from 70. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Right click. All right, so hold on. We got a blue cycle. Trend line required. Close below the trend line is also required. Waters down the probability. The high is 70 and a half. The low should be 69 and a half. Right? We right click at 69 and a quarter. That will be will be below the trend line. Okay, let's see what happens. So one, you can be proactive and do it like this. Or two, wait for you get the close here, then left click. Okay. All right, so that's the down close, right? All right, we said this is a problem, okay? So we'll see. Here's our stop loss, it's right here, okay? So if it goes plus four ticks in our favor, I'm gonna left click over that number one and drag it down, release it. Drag it down, release it, okay? That's the game plan for the risk management. Okay, so let's see what happens. Do we have the green line pulled away? It sure did. We have a lot of room. Okay, problem is that that's an issue. Is it turning up against the set of 45 degree angle? No, it's not. Okay, so that's safe. That's something you would see in the room. Okay. So let's see. When loser draw. So you notice how I did the brackets, right? Okay, all I had to do is click on this and that placed the stop loss right behind it, okay? So we're just waiting for the market to break down. The fact that this is blue is probably the reason why we're getting some grief here, okay? The black step line. Getting into the cycle is not necessarily good for the home team either, but it is what it is, okay? My idea was to get the, our feet wet. At least, I, at least I wanted to show you from start to finish how this would look, okay? And how to get inside the dom and actually push the button, okay? But all the rules applied here. We broke dynamic support. Okay. So that was that was there. We had the separation. The cycle was red, but right here was the problem, right? So this gives us grief for that reason. Our stop is right here. So it's just sitting. 
All right, so there's the MA1, that buzzword. So if we get a close on the other side of the MA1, which is right there, okay, the rule is we bring our stop to our entry, and it's going to be right on top of it, unfortunately. Okay, so we will follow the rule. That is the close. I'm just going to do this. Our stop is at our entry right here. All right, that's not surprising. We got stopped out. Okay, but let's see what happens here. And I, I'm going to make a make some points here okay because this is what you'll be faced with and we're going to try to keep this as real as possible okay all right so let's talk about what just happened okay no harm no foul but there was some good stuff here okay so number one we had the bearish cross okay the ma1 was crossing the BBC, so we're thinking short, okay? So we ask ourselves, are we trending? Well, once we break dynamic support, we can feel comfortable that we're trading below support. So that gives us some confidence that if we get any pullbacks to the BBC, okay, which happened right here, that we can feel comfortable getting short. So we activated our trend line, and we just started drawing, okay? So we're doing all the right things. Then we get the down and close. We get the down and close right here. Okay. Our eyes gravitate toward the BBC or toward the slingshot. And this guy turns color on us. Okay. So what registers is that waters down the probability. The probabilities aren't great. Okay. But do we have the separation? We do. So there is some room to run here, right? Because we know with green line, price will follow the green line, right? So there is some room there. So actually, this lights the match, okay? It was blue, so that was a warning flag, but it wasn't tilted up to, to avoid taking the trade, okay? I'll let Clark call us back. All right, so we get the down close, we get short. And we had the stop above us at 71.75. Okay, so we were right here. And the rule set is if it goes plus four ticks in our favor, or closes on the other side of the MA1, which is here, you put the stop to break even. That's what we did. Okay, so that kind of walks us through the trade from start to finish, okay? The fact that we're kind of back and forth here is indicative of this cycle turning a different color. It's confused right now, all right? So this, again, when it turns a different color on you, okay, you get some of this chop vest, okay? So, and that's what we're experiencing. The result is a break even, doesn't surprise me. You know, could I have move the stop here and sit right on top of it? Yes, but then I wasn't following the rules. Could I have squeezed it for a little bit more? Yeah, because the green line did what? It ultimately did get into the cycle, and this is where we probably, probably could have taken it off and made a few points. I don't know. The rule was move the stop to break even when that happens, okay? The object was walk you through this trade from start to finish. Okay, get inside the DOM here and show you how that all worked out, especially the way Mike does it, okay? Because you, you're definitely going to hear that. I guess it's 2 o'clock. All right, so I'm going to cancel that trend line. Okay, let's see if we can't find one other one. Uh, gold, again, here's that one example where we get the up close. The cycle's pointing down. Bert said not to take it, and then it goes up. Okay. So. And then crude. Crude is a mess. Sideways. Notice the first thing I do is zoom out. All right. So it's it's a little bit after 2 o'clock. So um, 
here's the scoop. The takeaway on this afternoon's presentation is this. One, if you're brand new, okay, this is the syllabus that you're going to lean on. This is the trade setup that's been around from day one. Okay, that's what's going on in the training room. Okay, number two, okay, one of the biggest traps that people fall into is the sideways action. Okay, the solution, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Why am I getting this? Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Okay, that will help you, okay, determine whether we're trending or not. If you zoom out, okay, if there's other support like we're looking at here, don't do it. Okay, when in doubt, stay out. Okay, if you're not sure, don't do anything. The other thing I want you to do as soon as we get across, okay, we, we identified step one as being a bearish cross or a bullish cross, is to activate the trend line. And we do that. Okay, prepare ourselves um, to take action. And we do all our buying and selling right here. Okay, so that's what we have to train ourselves to do, to draw trend lines. Okay, and the, and the last thing to take away from this is keep an eye on the slope. Okay, slope of it, especially when the wind is to our back. Okay, that should make, that should give us some comfort. Okay, that we're in the right direction of the momentum. Okay, and third or fourth, I don't know where we're at, but the idea is if that's a different color, one, it should register that that water down that does water down the probabilities. Okay, but two, if it's starting to slope against you at a 45 degree angle, no trade. Okay, chances are you're going to get stopped out. Chances are it might be break even. And a lot of times, if you get lucky and it does go in the direction of the trend, um, all right, that's a trap that people will fall into. Okay, kind of keeps you keeps you in the in the sand trap and playing around a little bit longer than you should be. Okay, so those are your takeaways. Okay, so every Thursday we go over the same thing over and over and over again. A lot of times I'll put you on hold and. We'll have to pick up the line uh, to service some other people that are calling in. But you can see if you hang out over and over, I, mean, I just I go I hammer the same stuff over and over again. And it's usually the simple things um, that people the traps that people fall into. Um, the, you know the only way to get around it is spend more time in front of the the markets that you're trading, uh, screen time, and learning the personalities of markets that that you're involved in. Okay. Um, and that's it. So every Thursday from one to two, we just hang out for an hour. Uh, if you have questions, call me or shoot me an email and I'll see you in the morning. I'm in the background. I let Mike do his thing, but if something pops up, I'll, I usually say something. So that's it.